Welcome to Your Next Mission podcast with the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilly. Proudly presented by Cavalry Agency, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue University Global, and Veterans United Home Loans. Hello out there, warriors, past and present, and your families, and thank you for serving our great country. Welcome to season three of your next mission video podcast, a program initiative of the American Freedom Foundation. I'm Jack L. Tilly, 12 Sergeant Major of the Army. You see how pumped up about that, and your host. Before we get started, though, I want to personally thank our presenting sponsors Calvary Agency, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue University Global, and Veterans United Home Loans for, for their generous support in making your next mission happen. They love our veterans and families. I'm gonna say it every week, we love them too. We have a great show for you today. We're gonna to be focusing on the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And I'm excited to introduce Major General Christopher C. Leneve, Commanding General, and CSM David R. Pitt, Command Sergeant Major. Welcome, I'm excited to have you on the show. Our Major, it's great to see you. Great to see Our you, Major. Who are, Thanks for having us. Oh, I know you guys are pumped up because I'm pumped up just talking to anybody from the 82nd. Hey, before we jump into all the stuff that's going on with the 82nd Airborne, can each one of you tell us, the audience, a little bit about yourself? Sir, we'll start with you. Uh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, uh, after graduating, uh, you know, high school, decided to join the Army. Um Ended up going through uh, University of Arizona, and, and I've basically been a light infantryman uh, my entire career. Had the opportunity to serve uh, really all over the Army. Got to meet you early on in my career as a young Ooh. captain after I came out of the uh, the 101st. Uh, went up to uh, to the Pentagon and worked in uh, what was then called Desk Ops, but the, basically the G3, the Army's office. That's where I met you, Sergeant Major. And just have had a, a blessed opportunity to continue to serve uh, my country for you know, 30, going on 33 years here pretty soon. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's really bad. When I, when I talked to you, you said you met me when you was a captain, and that was at the very end of my career. But uh, good to see you, sir. Sergeant Major, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, that's, that's me. Um, originally born and raised in England. Uh, my family's from Guyana. Moved to the, the States when I was 10 years old. Grew up in the Bronx. Uh, joined the Army when I was 20. February 23rd, 1993, I, I reported to the 82nd Airborne Division. I spent the majority of my career here um, being a paratrooper, um, an infantryman by trade. Yeah, you know, it's funny saying, now you guys got to understand something. I'm a paratrooper too. I went through jump school probably before you was born, you know, so that's, uh, well, maybe not that far back. <laughs> hey, 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 sir, the 82nd Airborne Division is capable of rapidly deploying at a, at a moment's notice, and it's been like that for years. Can you talk about why that's so important? Yeah, I, you know, um, we provide something, uh, you know, for our nation that, you know, no other division really can do. We can get anywhere in the world, you know, 1st Battalion, really anywhere in the world, 18 hours, the rest of a brigade, you know, on the ground in 96. And we maintain this culture of uh, incredible readiness um, for whatever our nation might might need of us. And that's what makes us a little bit different than all the other divisions that I've served in. Just that culture of uh, having to stay on a razor's edge, readiness, uh, and available for call out. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead, Sergeant Major. Yeah, uh, exactly right. Um, it's the culture of being a paratrooper in 82nd. It's always being ready to um, steal a quote from one of the former All-American Nines. You know, he says, what's the best state to be in? And he would say the state of readiness. And, you know, and that's where the 82nd really finds its sweet spot in being in a state of readiness and being ready for whatever the nation asks us to do. You know, what's interesting about that, a lot of times you'll hear people talk about the uh, you know, they never really say uh, much about how quickly the army can move, but we can we can be anywhere in the world in just a moment's notice. That's for sure. And and you're and uh, I don't know if it's just you. Is it is there the eighty second, the hundred first? I guess there's a couple other divisions are really had some rapid deploy brigades or battalions at, at a moment's notice. Sir, what what does it mean uh, to be a paratrooper? I know what it means. Of course, I was a paratrooper, but uh, to, for the audience, what does it mean really to be a paratrooper? You know, uh, for me, it's really it's two things. So the, the first one is you volunteered to serve your country, which, uh, you know, that sets you apart from 
from the rest of really America, such a small percentage really are are willing to raise their right arm and say, you know, send me. And then you volunteer a second time uh, to really uh, overcome fears. It's a natural fear. Uh, and uh, to trust your, your fellow paratroopers, to trust your equipment. Uh, and, uh, you know, take that leap of faith out of an aircraft. Uh, and, and it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's that basic being a paratrooper, but there's also the culture, what that, what that means. I mean, there's a history that we pull from, you know, our, there's some, you know, great historical, uh, battles we can all kind of focus on. Normandy, um, is one that we always, you know, uh, come back to. But, you know, our our mission is to go anywhere, jump in and, and automatically be surrounded. You know, as you're trying to open up an airfield, bring in, yeah. uh, uh, you know, more combat power to expand the lodgement and uh, get more follow on forces in. And with that brings a culture uh, that is just incredible uh, around these, uh, you know, I, I call them, you know, kids, but these uh, men and women that uh, are willing to do this uh, for our country. It sets them apart from everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So, Red, you want to add anything? Yeah. Um, what it means to be a paratrooper, SMA, I would just say it's uh encompasses uh going the extra mile, always putting forth the best effort and uh, conquering your fears. Like like the CG said, um, you know, every time you every time you leave an aircraft, it's an opportunity to conquer your fear. Um, it's and, and build that uh resiliency in yourself. I think um. You know, as serving in the 82nd as a paratrooper, you, you just are around a culture of people that are willing to do a little bit more than what is asked of them. And, and a lot of that time, it's it's um things that are not necessarily said. It's just an intent of you. You're expected to do more. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you a quick story here that uh, when I came into the service, they said I was uh, Airborne unassigned, and they assigned me to uh, a tank. I'm a tanker. Uh, I said, "Well, wait a minute. Tanks don't, you know, we don't throw tanks out of airplanes and stuff." But but I remember going to jump school, and it was the scariest thing in the world. I went basic AIT jump school and then straight to Vietnam. But but when I got to jump school, I remember the the uh, you know that uh, 40 foot tower. There was people that wouldn't jump out of that 40 foot tower, and I remember how how scared I was how to come out and have a good you know tight position to come out of there. But more than anything else, I think I remember when I graduated from jump school and, and they gave me my, I, don't, I guess they can't do it anymore. They gave me the blood wings. They used to give me the blood wings. They'd smack it in your chest. They can't do that anymore. But, but, I, but I felt that sense of pride and honor uh, of being a paratrooper and, and accomplishment. And, and you're really right. It, it sets you above people. I mean, you're sort of hovering and so proud of, of what you've done. And, and it's a great accomplishment. So God bless you. Yo, sir, sir, yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, if I could, because there's there's another component. So that that being a paratrooper, you know, it's kind of the center of what we do. Um, but, you know, part of our division actually arrives by parachute. Yeah. Other parts of our division are part of the follow on forces, but they're all paratroopers. They're yeah. Not not necessarily every one of them jump out of an aircraft but the ethos behind it of supporting that early entry force and getting in as fast as possible. That's what's being, that's, you know, the, the real um, essence of being a paratrooper is. Yeah. What, what, I mean, I, I remember years ago that, uh, you know, when I was still on active, which is a lot of years ago now, but I remember uh, the 82nd going into somewhere in Afghanistan and, and securing a specific area. And they was there for, uh, I don't know, two or three days or a week or whatever. And then another unit followed on behind him and, and took over the unit. And the 82nd, I think, let's say it was the 82nd, never said anything about it. They just packed up, moved out, and the unit that came in behind him all of a sudden was on CNN talking about taking that, uh, that position. And it really, I tell you the truth, it pissed me off a little bit because uh, we didn't get the puller. And the Army's sort of quiet about that. We never say much about all the kind of sacrifices and the things that we do all over the world. So, sir, staying in the, at the forefront of technology is important for the efficiency on the battlefield. We, we both know that. How does the 82nd Airborne Howland, you know, really handle all those challenges? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Our, our Army is, is continually changes, as you know. I, while you were up there, that was a pivotal time. Yeah. Uh, our Army is, we were taking a look at what our brigades, you know, look like and what the forces were going to look like. 
we continually challenge ourselves to see, uh, you know, trying to learn uh, new techniques, tactics, procedures, you know, on the battlefield. We take a look at what we're trying to do inside the division. We have an innovation lab uh, where we're trying to incorporate soldiers' ideas um, to try to take an idea all the way through, you know, conceptual to a, uh, you know, a prototype and then, uh, you know, something that we could use to make um, our operations easier. I'll just give you a couple examples. You know, uh, you, part of the way we sustain ourselves is we we push door bundles out of out of an aircraft. We're we're experimenting uh, a lot with uh, little things that we put on our door bundles that automatically populate on our uh, our end user device computers uh, that our paratroopers have on them that automatically populate show exactly what's on the ground, what's in the door bundles, where they're going. We experiment with UAS. We have our own um, UAS park here. Uh, well, we're we're continually experimenting with uh, new new uh, UAS uh, techniques, but we're also really looking for the best operators that we have across the division to be able to to build momentum. We also build another company inside our division. It's just a technical company. We call it the Ganey Company, um, and it takes uh, it's really got three platoons associated with it. One is just focused on making sure that we are the experts in our divisions on how we communicate with each other. Now we we do it with the integrated tactical network, but we we're trying to build resiliency and understanding across all of our formations, not relying on somebody else to come down and teach us about that. We have another platoon that's focused on robotics and UAS, and a third platoon. That's really focused on uh, technical innovation, you know, solutions for the battlefield. So we're trying to harness all of this energy that 19,000 paratroopers bring because we don't have all the good ideas. Uh, believe me, we, we don't have a lot of the good ideas but <laughs> inside our formation Yeah. from, uh, you know, E1 to E9. There's every solutions out there. And we're trying to pull that out, experiment with it. And uh, it work as much as possible. I, I'll give you an example. It doesn't have to be a technological revolution. It can just be an idea uh, that somebody comes up with to make it easier for our paratroopers to go about their their uh, you know daily activities. You know, we had old wooden benches down at, at our deployment facility. Those those benches were formed for T10 parachutes. Well, we we have T11s now. Mm -hmm. As you sat on those benches, you actually it put more strain on the body. Just an idea, you know, from a paratrooper out there. Uh, we put a couple extra boards on the benches. It now takes, you know, lifts the T-11 pack tray up. You can rest while you're waiting for your aircraft. Those are, are innovative solutions that come from the team that we try to act on as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. Sergeant Major, go ahead. Yeah, Sergeant Major, just uh, from an innovation standpoint, like, the, you know, the, the CG was saying, every paratrooper has the opportunity to submit uh, an idea and uh, to see it go from just a thought to being able to go over to the innovation lab and use a 3D printer or get the resources that you need to make this come true. And it's not and it's not always serving, a you know, solving an army problem. It might be solving a company problem um, and to be able to have those resources to make something that fits your kit or helps the company. Um, and then you look at just uh, what we've been able to do with the, you know, the resources that we've been provided with our H2F. Um, and you just think how far we've come in physical training and how we make sure that we're not hurting paratroopers and the longevity of them um, is there for their health and for the Army. So innovation is across the board. Yeah, you know, you know change is part of the military. And, you know, if you don't change, you fall behind. And you said, uh, you mentioned PT. I remember running in boots years ago. And I thought how much that tore my feet up. And then also we went to tennis shoes. So, and I remember coming in the army with a, oh, this is years ago too, coming in the army with an M14. When I left the army, they got an AR. So you have to stick, stay abreast of change. The other thing is, again, it, it, um, my hat's off to you guys. Good leaders listen to people, listen to your soldier, your paratroopers, whatever, so they can make the kind of changes that make it a better organization. That's That's really what you guys are, you guys are doing so. I uh, God God bless you for what you're doing and and keep up the good work. We're gonna we're gonna we're talking with Major General Christopher C. Leneve and uh, Commanding General and Command Sergeant Major David R. Pitt, Command Sergeant Major of the famed 82nd Airborne Division of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. 
and you're watching your next mission video podcast with me, your host, Jack Ed Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major Army. Don't forget, uh, if you're enjoying this discussion, and if you're not enjoying it, something's wrong, please like us. Click on that subscribe button below. Sergeant Major, NCOs in the 82nd Armored Division. Now, that's a great question right here. I, I read this a few times, though, but NCOs in the 82nd Armored Division are raised differently than other units in the Army. Now, you got to elaborate on that a little bit here for me. Uh, as, um, what I would say is uh, when you talk about raised differently, I would think every NCO in the 82nd Airborne um, Division, it's um, thought that they, it's, they're trained to become jump masters. That That is, you know, the CG has put a focus on, if you're leading an out formation, then your responsibility is to lead everywhere. That's at PT, and that's also out the aircraft. And so if, so every leader, the expectation is they attend um, the jump master course, graduate, and lead their paratroopers out the aircraft. And so when you but back that up and you get the specialist that, you know, that's going to go to BLC and then become a sergeant, they, they are started to train in airborne operations on um, their, their primary MOS and just everything that has to do with the airborne culture. So in that regards, uh, Esme, I would say that's how they're raised differently. They're raised to be jump masters. It's an expectation. And that comes with technical and tac tactical proficiency that probably is unique to an airborne unit. I, I tell you the other thing, Sergeant Major, I think what it is, uh, there's a sense of pride of being in the 82nd. And, and you're, you know, you're standing above, a, a, you know, I don't know if you're standing above anybody, but, but, you, but people put you on a platform and, and people want to be in the 82nd Airborne. There's no question about that. Those are the kind of units that people strive to be in with those jump wings and the motivation and the enthusiasm that the 82nd has all the time anywhere I've ever been. I, I agree with you. I think that uh, it is a little bit of a different culture. I, you know, I was uh, I was in a meeting with Steve England one time years ago. He was down at Fort Bliss, and and uh, they was talking about all this new technology. And and uh, and I looked at him and I said, "Hey, Sergeant Major, I don't have that technology." He says, "No, no, you don't have it, but we'll give you our secondhand stuff eventually <laughs> down to you guys." So I know, ex <laughs> you know, he's starting to gouge me a little hey. bit. <laughs> That sounds like that sounds like a no, no. He, he's a, he's a first. All those guys are first class. They taught me a great deal. And they're good friends of mine. Sir, can, uh, can you tell me uh, why is it so important to be a jump master? I'm sorry, Major mentioned it a couple times, but uh, why is it so important to, to be a jump master in there in the 82nd Airborne Division? Yeah, so, uh, sorry, Major, that is a great question. I, I push uh, you know jump masters all the time. So first thing, um, it is at the essence of who we are. So uh, I'm a paratrooper and I'm a rifleman when I show up to do sustained airborne training. So before everything begins, you know, we do, you know, final man and pest call and we get ready to do sustained airborne training. I'm following a jump master uh, and their commands, just like every private in this formation does. We're all the same. We're watching a jump master, whether it's a young non-commissioned officer or a young officer in our formation. And we're looking to them to make sure that, you know, everything that happens, uh, you know, inside the aircraft, how we're rigged, how we jump out, when we jump out, uh, that uh, all of the standards uh, are adhered to for the for the safety. But it's more than that. I mean, if you're a junior leader in the 82nd Airborne Div Division or a senior leader, you should be a jump master. It shows the excellence uh, towards uh, what this division is all about. Um, and, you know, I have a great friend that commands uh, a heavy division, you know, being a master gunner uh, is, you know, something that, uh, you know, their young leaders look up to inside this division. Jump master uh, is what excellence uh, should be. It's who we look to in an aircraft to make sure we're safe. It's that last person I'm going to see as I hand my static line off of before I, let, you know, jump out of the aircraft. And not, like I said, I'm a paratrooper and a rifleman from the moment I show up. At, uh, you know, the initial uh, manifest call to the moment I get some piece of uh, equipment in the operation so I can start to command and control the division. From point A to that last step, we're all the same in this division. We assemble and move on to our initial uh, objective. So it's a, it is an incredible place to be, but our jump masters have got to maintain the standards. When I walk in the house at night, I walk right by a picture of Gavin. 
and I make sure every single day I don't let that picture down. Um, you know, and and our jump masters should be doing the same thing, not letting this community down. Yeah, Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major was one of those young jump masters a long time ago. <laughs> long, long time. Is that right? I, I, I got it. How, how long does it take you to go through? Is there a jump master school? How long does it take you to go through the school or jump master school? Or is there one? Yeah. yeah. Um, so here in the 82nd, we run our jump master school. And then, you know, you've got ground week, um, you've got PWAC, and then practice work and aircraft. And so to, to make, to go through the course, um, it's a very trying course on um, when you talk about JMPI and the, you know, people like to talk about the, you know, the failure rates and how hard it is, but the pressure is on um, for you to be that good. Um, and the ones that do graduate and whether it's the first time, second time, it doesn't matter. Once you graduate, you are now the standard bearer in, in our organization. And I promise you, um, like the CG says, it doesn't matter if he shows up or I show up. We don't, you know, we're just jumpers. And so we get there and we execute everything. It, I mean, sometimes it's a corporal out there, you know, giving us commands in an aircraft. And that says a lot about the non-commissioned officers and the young junior officers in our organization, that they are, they are that confident to stand in front of the commanding general and the sergeant major. And we have no questions whether they're ready to execute those duties as a jump master. You, you know, I remember the first time I ever jumped. I don't think I counted. I think, you know, I was just standing at the door and everybody started going out. And I, and I was telling Ted a few little while ago, I said, you know, I'd had, I was in a good position going down and I was in that chute popped out. I said, Lord, have mercy. I think I jumped twice before I started counting 1,001, 1,002 of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's not, the other thing I'd tell you is, is that, uh, it's about pride of organization. It's about the unit. It's about what you guys uh, do. I, I'm not going to ask you how many people you got deployed every day, but I know you guys stay pretty active on the things you're doing. Uh, but, uh, you know, God bless you for what you're doing. And I agree with you. Being a, being a jump master, I also was a master gunner in the armor community, so I know how tough that course was. So uh, those are the things that uh, set our NCO core aside from a lot of other people. So uh, God bless you. Keep up the great work. Serve Sergeant Major. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be, uh, we'll be right back. You're watching your Next Mission video podcast. You're watching Your Next Mission, proudly presented by the Cavalry Agency. They help brands dominate no matter their size. Ideas, strategy, action. This is Cavalry. Learn more at Cavalry.com. Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Purdue Global, providing affordable online education for hardworking adults. Learn more about a personalized, innovative, and world-class education at PurdueGlobal.edu. Veterans United Home Loans, the number one VA lender for five straight years. If you're buying, they're funding your dreams. Learn more at VeteransUnited.com. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with Major General Christopher C. Leneve, Commanding General and CSM David R. Pitt, Sergeant Major of the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And I want all of our listeners to reach out to me directly. Tell us about your transition. Tell us what topics you'd like us to cover. You can call or text me at 844-424-1134, and I'll actually reach back out to you. Or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Okay, let's pick it up where we left off. Uh, serve Sergeant Major. Unfortunately, we're heading into our final segment with you today, and I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as I have. And I just have a, a couple of more questions. Sir, would you talk about the sacrifice our pair, uh, paratroopers and their families make uh, serving the 82nd Airborne Division? Yeah, that, absolutely. I'm pretty passionate about this one. I know Sergeant Major is, too. We talk about this uh, every uh, every Tuesday when we, we do our newcomers run. And uh, you know we get the opportunity to talk to uh, all of our newcomers uh, in a in a classroom afterwards. But you know uh, it, it's there is a sacrifice associated with serving in the 82nd Airborne Division, uh, and and a little bit more is expected of you here because of the uh, the readiness uh, that we're required to 
to maintain and the alert cycle that we're we're required to maintain. Uh, so that does put a stress on on not only our paratroopers but our families, um, and we're very upfront on it. Uh, so what we try to do is we we run a cycle system so everybody knows exactly where they are in the cycle system and when they should be able to anticipate. Uh, you know, unless there's a uh, alert and a call up where they can anticipate, uh, you know, having the opportunity to take leave, go to schools, all, all the, uh, the different things to maintain your your professional, you know, upward mobility. But it all comes with a price. And uh, I mean, Sergeant Major, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm 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 preaching to one of the believers, you know, <laughs> but uh, you, you know. You know that there always comes a, a cost uh, when a when a unit is is required to have a higher level of readiness, a higher level of uh, you know a, alert uh, readiness as well. Uh, but that also draws a certain individual inside of our formations. Um, and uh, I'm sure you'll get a couple questions, you know, at the end of the podcast, and you. Have, you know, are we really ever going to, you know, do a mass airborne assault again? And, and you know, I've been asked that a couple of times and uh, it's actually, uh, you know, it's a it's a great question. But to me, it's actually an irrelevant question because that's not the that's not uh, the task that I've been given uh, by the Army. My my task is to be ready to do one. So we train it uh, as much as we possibly can, uh, because nobody will ask, uh, you know, if you're ready and they're just going to call you. And, and this division has been called uh, multiple times recently, uh, and we know that, you know, history will teach us that we have to be ready. So that does come with a cost to our paratroopers and their families. You know, Sergeant Major? Yeah, yeah, Sergeant Sar Major. And so, like this, you said, you know, every Tuesday morning, our airborne integration course, I, I like to open up and I say, I always tell the young paratroopers, whether they're, you know, coming here or coming back, especially the ones coming out of AIT, I always tell them, you know, just think of all your friends across the Army that don't get to say that they're in the 82nd or Warren Division. And you have the right to tease them jokingly, um, but it comes at a cost, and that cost is our, our operation readiness cycle. It means that we're always ready. Somebody's always on the X to go. Um, and it's not, you know, after you do it over a period of time, it's not an, an easy task to be in a cycle where you're you're on a two hour, four hour, six hour recall, or you're in the field for an extended period of time, or then you're in support. Um, so it does come at a cost. And, but what that cycle does, it we, we, what we try to make it do is have a lot of predictability for the families. And so, you know, we have through our SFRGs and everything else, we try to tell them this is when you're training, this is when you're on alert. And it's built out so far out. The CG has put it so far out. And there's things that he makes sure that he holds commanders accountable that they're not doing and they're only doing that in that cycle to allow predictability for their families. Because, you know, if you've been here over a period of time, four or five years on that cycle, um, it's it's very important that we give you the time and that the time is made for your family and and other things so that you will want to stay in the 82nd you want to stay on that cycle i tell you sorry, mate, we have we yeah we've gotten i mean you you and everyone that has followed you and then those that came before you uh, have all fought hard uh for the resources that we have inside this division uh we're going to continue to fight for additional resources for our paratroopers and their family uh, but we, uh, we we do have an incredible support system here, but it still comes at a heavy price for the for the paratroopers. But you take a look at those that that serve here; they continue want to stay because uh, there's something about serving uh, inside the 82nd. I have you know multiple assignments here, Sergeant Major. Uh, they're going to have to pull him out of here, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, and and that and that is uh, how the majority of people feel. Um, there's just something about being in an organization like this and having the camaraderie and that shared, uh, you know, hardship together that builds an incredible team. Yeah, it's, I always say, I can't remember the movie, that's the best job I ever had. Uh, the, other, the, the other thing that I tell you is that uh, when you talk about sacrifices, you know, I, I, as you was talking, I was thinking about, I never watched my kids grow up. Uh, I miss so many birthdays. I miss so many Christmases. And you think about those sacrifices. You know, it's, and there's a lot of sacrifice I know on the on the younger soldiers, and, and that's what you guys are focused on. But I think a lot of times 
uh, our senior leaders like yourself and a sergeant major, you guys sacrifice a great deal that that you just keep moving. And and I tell you, you don't realize that you've lost it until it's pr probably too late. I, I remember one time that I never watched my uh, uh, oldest son, I never watched my oldest son or my youngest son really grow up. And they have a, and to this day, they have a, a better relationship with their mother than me. Now, my grandkids, I spoil the crap out of them. I try to do everything I can for them, but uh, that's just part of the job. Sergeant Major, you're going to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, SMA, you're exactly right. But what I would say um, is that, you know, you talk about the senior leaders and how much they've missed. And I think that um, we have so many senior leaders that have lived that life and at at all costs, they they make an effort to ensure that um, just because it happened to you doesn't make it right. That's um, right. And we I say agree. that a lot. Just because it was done to you doesn't make it right. And so every senior leader here looks at opportunities to ensure that we don't, that our paratroopers don't miss the things we miss. I mean, when, you know, you have you a, a commander that will come to the CG and say, I know we're doing a lot of things, but I would like to stop right now and just come out of the field for a day so my paratroopers can take their kids trick-or-treating. I know we're in the middle of a cycle. It doesn't matter. And 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 the answer is yes, because we've lived it. We've been away. Um, and so at all at, at all possible, if we can not let that happen, um, I think our senior leaders in 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 inside the 82nd really put an effort to do that. Well, what you got to do is really teach those young captains and majors and, and colonels about, you know, about that taking care of so taking care of soldiers, not just not just saying I'm going to take care of soldiers is making sure they have time off. They visit their families. They're there for the birthday. They're there when the spouse has, you know, when they have a baby or a child or something. Those are those are big deals that uh, sometimes we get more focused on the mission versus what's important. Uh, you know, that's a family. I mean, it's all important, but the. Okay, again, that fight is a big deal. Sergeant Major, what, what do you consider the most uh, most important thing you've learned throughout your time in the division? What's the most important thing? The most important thing? Um, as a paratrooper. Can't be just talking to me. No, go ahead. Something else. <laughs> just, no, just as a as a paratrooper, Sergeant Major, I would tell you um the most important thing I've learned is the you know, what can be if somebody believes in you. Yep. I I I'm I'm I say that in all honesty. Um, and I love to tell the paratroopers about my first jump and how I was probably the person that you were like, oh, my gosh, this guy's in my platoon. Um, you know, didn't find my assembly area till the sun came up. Um, you know, if my if my platoon starts out there watching, he's probably laughing right now. Um, but if somebody believes in you and you have a good leader and you have somebody that believes in you, honestly, that's me. The things that you'll be able to accomplish um, are unbelievable. There, you know, you you grow, you can grow up to be the division sergeant major, and that, and that doesn't happen um, everywhere. And I used to say, uh, oh man, if I had been anywhere else, you know, if I just had focus. But the truth is, being here in this in this time and having the leaders I have is exactly why I'm here. Um, I probably I don't know if I get that if I go, you know, finish college or I do something else. It's it's specific and unique to this place. Um, the leaders that were here that I was around and was was able to learn from. Well, you had a good mentor. You had somebody that really cared about you. I used to tell people that uh, that you may find this crazy, but I, I never was worried about promotions in the army. I, I was always I, I never you know I everybody wants to get promoted. There's no question about it. But but I really uh, sort of stayed in my lane of operation. If, if I was a platoon sergeant, that that's where I gave 150 percent. If I was a, a first sergeant, 150, sergeant major, whatever level it was, and I never worried about uh, about any kind of advancement. But I always worried about making sure that the the people that I worked with, uh, somebody took care of them, you know. And I was that person was going to take. And it was quite frankly, it was seven days a week. Uh, you know, every day of my life, I dedicated my life to the military. And I think uh, sometimes, sometimes not not all the time, but sometimes you don't find people that do that. They make it more of a job versus anything else. And the military, and uh, being the 80s, it can't be just a job. You've got to be dedicated to what you're doing and understand the importance of what you're doing. So same same question, sir. I know you uh, served in the 82nd. I thought you was a young captain. I guess you was a lieutenant colonel when you was there. Same question. What what experience you take out of that, sir? 
Well, I, I'll give you the 82nd one, then I'll give you the United States Army because there's there's sure. two there. So, you know, in the 82nd, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, saying it's on our coin right now. It's it's part of one of my policy letters, but guns and leaders to the front. You know, leaders move to the point of friction. That's what this division is all about. Uh, really, you know, whether it's solving a tactical problem or solving a different issue, just guns and leaders moving to the front, to me, sums up the energy that's inside this incredible organization called the 82nd airborne division. And we, we, we never forget where we come from, but we're pretty excited about where we're going. Um, and, and we want to test all the new equipment. We want to be the ones that, that say whether or not something works because of how incredible our paratroopers are. And, uh, it just, there's that energy here. So, uh, that's what I love about serving in the 82nd airborne division. Yeah. Serving in the Army uh, is, uh, you know, a part of that, but it's something a little bit different for me. So, you know, I always tell people I'm the last person that should ever be a general officer. I, I, I had a hard time graduating high school, uh, you know, barely got through college. But if you listen to me, I got a speech impediment. They uh, had people tell me early on I would never talk in front of people. Uh, I'd have a uh, have a hard time. And I don't have any problem getting up in front of, you know, 19,000 paratroopers talking. The Army has given me every opportunity um, to it just, you know, through hard work and some great leaders and mentors that have, uh, you know, showed me the way. Some great non-commissioned officers that have wrapped their arms around me and, uh, you know, helped teach me um, along the way and uh, been some incredible battle buddies. I would never be. Uh, the 82nd Airborne Division Commander, let alone, you know, uh, a general in the Army. And that's what the Army uh, can give anybody. Yeah. And that's what makes this, this uh, you know, uh, thing we call service to our nation so incredible. And I hope more people realize that that they can really get uh, just any lifelong, um, you know, ambitions, goals, or really dreams can come true in this organization. And the other thing about this organization is we all come from so many different places to learn from so many different people. I mean, I'm from Pittsburgh. Uh, he's from New York. We shouldn't even like each other because <laughs> my football team, my football team's good. His isn't. <laughs> you know, so uh, we, it brings this whole, you know, mixing bowl together. This army is incredible, but I tell you, if it wouldn't have been for the army, I, I don't know what, what, uh, uh, happened to me. It gave me direction. Uh, it gave me, uh, you know, uh, some confidence. Um, and I, I just, uh, owe everything. I owe it enough that I want to make the, make sure the army stays great. Cause I, both of my children, uh, no matter how long I was gone, both decided to join the army and they're in right now serving. Who so, are uh, you know, pretty excited about their futures as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's funny. I, I think there's a lot of people in the military that have the same kind of story as you. Not, not the same kind of story, but just a similar story. I, I was a terrible kid. Uh, I'm like you. I just, well, I, I'll tell you now. I spent a little time in reform school. I wasn't a good kid. Wasn't a really a crappy little kid. But but uh, coming in the army, it changed my life and it saved my life because uh, I'm not sure where I would have been today. And it, and it really just what you just said. It opened its arms up and allowed me to come in and taught me, developed me, allowed me to be who I am today. Whether or not that's good or bad, depending on who's looking at me, but 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 allowed me any success I've had in life. You know, my mother, my father, my wife, my kids, everything, but but it allowed me to be who I am. And I think that's the that's the neat thing about being in the Army of course in, in the 82nd Airborne too. It really gives you so much that it can offer. And there's nothing that the army, I mean, the army, I always tell people they get upset about that. You put all the services together, they're not quite as big as the army. You know, we're a little bit bigger than everybody, but we have a little bit of each service in our service. Uh, so, you know, I, I love the army. In fact, uh, I tell people all the time that I'll do everything I can for the United States Army till I die. And hopefully that's a few years down the road, but but you just <laughs> but you just never know. Hey, You still look at you still look like you could take a, a PT test. Well, to, you know, I, I could. You know, I work out usually every day. I work out for an hour. And I, do, I don't do I do heavy weights or nothing. Uh, like your, the master sergeant was talking before. I mean, he's, he's pumping all sorts of iron. But, uh, you know, I lift some small weights and I work out elliptical. But, but I probably could run five miles, I guess, if I had to do that. Not real fast. But, uh, and I don't know if anything could be on my back. All I could carry maybe a weapon and a magazine. <laughs> 
talking like that will get you an invite to all Americans. <laughs> I could probably, I could probably hang. You know, I used to do those crazy one hand of push ups that I used to do about 64, I think, is the max. And I got down the other day and tried to do one. I said, damn, I don't know if I can do one of them anymore. So, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, look, first of all, let me say it's thank you for what you guys are doing. It's unbelievable. And I, I appreciate it. I'll do anything I can to help you. And God bless both of you. And, and sir, as a young captain, I'm glad I got to meet you. And I wasn't real bad to you. So I guess I'm not too bad a guy. And so, Major, major. I, yeah, I, let me, I, I do want to tell you. Um, so you never know who you're going to have an impact on, uh, who you're talking to. Star Major talks about this all the time. Uh, you know, you never know who you're talking to. Absolutely. But a, as a, you know, com a captain coming right out of company command, you actually took a couple minutes and sat down and talked to me. It has an impact all the way up until today. And when I heard that you wanted us to do this, I jumped at the chance uh, just because of trying to give back a little bit. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, if people go back and look at the times you served. Um, that was a pretty trying time for us in the Pentagon uh, for a little while there. And I really appreciate not only your leadership, but your mentorship of a young officer a long time ago. Um, I, I do appreciate it. And look what happened. <laughs> well, hopefully we didn't screw up. You're doing a good job there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, hey uh, Sergeant Major, sir, again, God bless you and, and keep up the good. Any final thoughts? Anything we missed? Anything you want to? Sir, we're going to stop. We've got, you've got to go, sir, and then to Sergeant Major. So, sir, you go ahead. You got any final thoughts? Anything you want to say? Uh, well, yeah, I think we hit it all. I, I do want to, uh, you know, thank you for asking about our paratroopers and their families. Um, I, I do truly appreciate that, and I hope that your audience uh, understands, um, and I, I'm sure the majority of them do, understand the commitment and the sacrifice that they have um that they are that they're making every day and we appreciate the support we appreciate your uh your thoughts we appreciate your prayers as they go about uh their mission every single day so we we do appreciate it so major how about yourself go ahead that's me what i i, I just like to say thank you um for having this platform and being and being here and i say that truly because every day we talk to paratroopers and, and i've said this and, and the cg will echo it is that you know, we go from a time where we, you know, people would say, I heard General Gavin say, uh, he, General Gavin told me, so I heard what General Gavin said. And um, it's so important that, you know, you guys are more than a pitcher. All, all the legends, you're more than a pitcher. And the more that our younger paratroopers have contact with you, the more they'll understand that what they're in charge and entrusted with, with maintaining and, and moving forward. Um, and so we can't do that unless they, there's some connection and, and it's just not a bio. It's just not a picture. You having this platform allows um, younger paratroopers, younger soldiers to 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 actually interact with the the legacy they're charged with upholding. Um, and so I just want to say thank you to that, because it is critical that that happens. And, and you know, the CG and I, we we see that every day that if they can touch you and they can talk to you. They their buy in to what they need to do is, is unbelievable. Yeah, well, they, they know whether or not you care, or you don't care uh, by your actions. You know, I used to I used to travel a lot, and you know, especially as a sergeant major of the army, I used to travel a lot. And they say, "Hey, sergeant major, we got to go." And I and I tell people that if there's a soldier standing there, I'm going to talk to him. You know, if there's a paratrooper standing, there, I'm going to talk to him because because I owe it to them to do all I can to help them develop and grow in the United States Army, and that's that's exactly what you guys are doing. So. So uh, keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. And, and again, from this old soldier, just let me know if I can ever help you. Go ahead, sir. We need to get a damn parachute for your desk. There's, uh, there's too many vehicles sitting on there. So we need to get something <laughs> to represent the parachute. Absolutely. Send me one. We'll put it on the desk. We'll put, we'll put, we'll put you guys' name on it or something like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. God bless both of you. Hey, thanks to Major General Leneve. And uh, CSM Pitt, uh, I'm Jack Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. You've been watching your next mission video podcast. And, and thank you for watching today. Please visit our website at yournextmission.org and, and leave me a review. I always say I hope it's a good review, but if it's a bad one, I guess I can take that too. You can also visit our partners there who can provide you with so many services that will assist you in your transition from the military. Also, please visit our corporate partners and see all the jobs that are available. Please know we want to assist you any way we can. Just like talking to the commander and the sergeant major, please know we 
want to assist you any way we can. Please follow me on all my personal social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and, and LinkedIn. And if you enjoyed this discussion with uh, Major General Lviv and, and CSM Pitt, please like us and click on that subscribe button below. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Please leave me a message or send me a text at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Major General Leneve and CSM Pitt for being with us today. It was great just having you on the show. And, and at this part of the show, I'm always supposed, always supposed to give my final thoughts. And today I'm, I'm so pumped up about, one is about talking to the 82nd Airborne, talking to people that, that care about our country, talking to people that are willing to sacrifice their lives to ensure our freedom. It's about God, it's about our life, it's about our military, it's about our army, and it's about you. Never forget, there's people out there each and every day doing the things that keep us free. God bless each and every one of you. Again, thanks for watching, and thanks to Cloudcast Media, New Mind Studios, and of course, our four presenting sponsors, Calvary Agency, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue University Global, and Veterans United Home Loans. We appreciate all you do for our military. And as always, see you on the high ground. hoo You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.